So good morning. This is um, my patient, Sammy. She actually happens to be one of my cats. And Sammy, she's healthy weight. She eats great. She plays with my other pets. Um, she cuddles with us. She does all the normal cat things. Had her in for her exam about five weeks ago and discovered that her whole mouth is inflamed and diseased. She has a disease called stomatitis and you would never know from how she acts. And the point of this is, is that she's two and a half years old and already has bad dental disease. And that's something that amazes even us. Um, and the other point is that sh she didn't act like her mouth hurt. Our patients will not always show their pain in their, their oral pain because they're programmed to continue to eat. A couple weeks ago, we did the first half of her dental. And in her case, we had to extract all of the teeth on, on her right side. Dr. Davis and I um, did a, a team extraction um, event for her. Um, we've let her heal for a couple weeks and today she has to we have to remove all the other teeth so so that's what we're doing here today and we'll get you some pictures as we're doing things and and um, hope to teach you a few things sammy is getting a little injection right now to make her a little calmer so that we can put an iv catheter in her this is one of the safety methods that we that we utilize to make sure that pets stay completely safe during their anesthesia. Sammy has had a little medicine to make her relax so that we can put an IV catheter in. An IV catheter is one of several safety mechanisms we use um, for animals under anesthesia. So Josue, one of our tech students, is holding her right now for that, and Dr. Davis is gonna place the IV catheter. Sammy has now been intubated for her procedure and um, we're going to get underway here pretty soon. Um, we're monitoring uh, EKG over there um, and um, pulse ox and respiration and blood pressure. Um, so all these things that are hooked up to her are safety mechanisms. Um, plus I have Postway standing here Hello. keeping track of, of, of everything and, and um, Ashlyn is getting ready for x-rays. So um, here we are. We'll give you some more updates later. Here are Sammy's previous extraction sites, healing as expected. This is the side of Sammy's mouth we're working on today. This is Ashlyn, my licensed veterinary technician, and she is positioning the x-ray machine so we can take some x-rays to see, to help guide our extractions. Um, these are some of the x-rays we've already taken. Um, when we're evaluating an animal for needed extractions or dental work we're evaluating the x-rays we're evaluating the, the the health of the gingiva the gum tissue and we're evaluating by probing the teeth and so there's several things to, that go into making an assessment about whether teeth need to come out so we're going to show you the inside of her mouth and one of the things that got her here is how inflamed her gingiva is um, all along these teeth um, the other side was similar a couple weeks ago and we extracted all of those and so she's two weeks out from extraction and healing very well um, from her other um, dental work. So when we're evaluating teeth for extraction, we do a combination of probing the teeth. Um, and, and so we slide our probe in around all of them to see how far in it goes. Um, this tooth has severe gingivitis in it. Um, and if we look at the x-ray over here of these teeth, these are all of her bottom left teeth and what we're seeing here is is bone loss around these these roots and and that's just going to progress until these teeth break off and leave painful roots behind and so those teeth are all coming out today um, sometimes you know last time even under anesthesia she was reacting to me probing these teeth um, there's a big probe there this is an upper tooth um, the probe falls in a lot farther than it should. Um, so that's that's a, a, a problem tooth too. Um, we're gonna x-ray these, but but really, um, because of the amount of, of gingivitis, stomatitis she has going on, all of her teeth are coming out. So just a point here. A lot of people talk about doing um, non-anesthetic dentals. And, you know, they, they take their dogs or cats in and they come out and they're clean. That's only taking care of the crowns. You cannot take an x-ray on an awake animal. You can't probe them. 
you cannot extract the teeth that are diseased and so really doing good dental care requires x-rays it requires probing it requires anesthesia requires assistance and so you cannot do a good job if your patient is not anesthetized just a little bit of a rant there so there you go that we're going to be extracting these mandibular teeth we are going to do a local block so this syringe has marpane which is a kind of longer acting local anesthetic and a little bit of buprenorphine just to add more of an analgesic element and make it a little more effective so i'm feeling along the mandible for a little notch and then everything's harder with gloves on but Right where I feel that notch, I'm just going to insert my needle, draw back, make sure I don't get any blood, and then we are going to inject our block. There you have it. Right, so again, since we know that teeth are going to be extracted on top as well, we're going to block the top. So it's harder to feel with gloves, but we're feeling for a little opening that we are going to try and insert our needle in. So let's see if I can actually feel it. So we are going to go in and I'm not hitting bone and I am actually in the right spot. So we always wanna draw back, make sure we don't get any blood. And we are using a short needle, but we do wanna make sure to not go too far in as well. And we are going to block and then just apply a little bit of pressure coming out so that it doesn't escape. Right, so here we have Dr. Davis in the process of making her gingival flaps so she's just trying to expose more tissue to be able to work with for the extraction process. She is currently using a periosteal elevator, and as every doctor will point out, <laughs> sharp instruments are your best friend. So we're working on Sammy still, and we're working on her bottom jaw, and in a minute I'm going to show you what her mouth looks like, and, and if you're squeamish you should look away at that point because there's a little bit of blood, but this is her lower jaw, and this is these are the premolars down there and a molar. Uh, the front of her jaw is this way. Um, and so what we see around this tooth is bone loss, and around this tooth is bone loss. So those teeth have to come out. You'll also see that there's pretty healthy root on both of these, and so these teeth are tricky to get out. This one also needs to come out. It, it, there's bone loss here too, it's not quite as obvious, but probing it, it's pretty uncomfortable. So we've already done something called a flap where we've flipped away some of the gingival tissue, which we'll have to sew back. And so this is where, if you're squeamish, you should look away. Um, so in her mouth, we have moved away some of the gingiva, and we're going to burr away some of the bone on the outside of this so that the teeth are easier to extract. And then we'll, um, it, it will uh, cut those teeth in half, basically, and remove them. We've already taken one of them, so, so that's the plan here. Um, almost through extracting all of these, uh, left mandibular molars and premolars. There's this one root left. I've burred away some bone here um, so that I can see the roots and so that I get them out without breaking them. Um, I still have this canine to go and these two incisors and then we're going to close up. All right, so Sammy has finally completed all of the extractions and the final product is several little sutures that are all absorbable. So typically we like to recheck them in about two weeks just to make sure everything's healing properly. And if there's loose suture hanging out, sometimes we'll pull it, but usually we just let the suture either absorb or it'll fall out while they eat or, you know, chew on a toy or something. So this is the final product. Typically we would finish with a fluoride, but there are no teeth left. So this is what she will heal up from. Okay, here is Sammy post-op. She's a little bit dizzy from her anesthesia. Um, she's alert. She's pretty comfortable because her blocks are still in place and she's had pain medication, which will continue for the next few days. Um, we'll offer her some food once she gets home. I bet she'll eat just fine. Well, my kitty's back. <laughs> and uh, 
for the second time. She's doing great. This is uh, she just got in tonight, and uh, I had a, a wonderful set of vets uh, work on her, and uh, she's got no teeth. Stay in there, baby. So I'm at home. I just wanted to finish up this video with a few final thoughts. Um, one, back to the to the introduction. Remember that pets don't show pain. They don't show that their mouths hurt. Really, you need to trust your veterinarian to help you make the assessment of the mouth and and determine when and if your pet needs some um, anesthetized oral care. Two, as I mentioned, anesthesia is really super important to getting the job done. You cannot do a good job. I don't care what people are telling you, what the groomer is telling you, even what some of my colleagues are telling you, you cannot do a thorough job on a patient that is awake. So keep that in mind. Three, maybe after you've watched some of this or, or watched this video through, you have some understanding of why it's expensive to do dentistry. It requires at least three people on your pet. So we have a, a, a veterinary technician taking the x-rays. We have an assistant or a technician monitoring anesthesia. We have a veterinarian doing the, the, the extractions. And, and you, you know, I pay my, my team what they deserve. Actually, probably they deserve more. Don't tell them that. Um, it requires very specialized equipment that is expensive to purchase and maintain. It requires lots and lots of continuing education for us to become proficient in what we're doing and doing it and, and be able to do it safely. So if you can't afford it, talk to your veterinarian and see what you can work out with him or her. Um, for a, a payment plan um, and, and what you can do in the meantime to keep your pet as comfortable as possible. Thanks for watching and um, call us if you have questions.